Another late night round of uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker. <clears throat> Earlier today, we reached a point of a barbarian invasion in Brevoy. Um, and uh, we fought the um, army back. But their leader, their leader, uh, um, it's not Angmar, it's not Agramar, it's it's uh, Armak. Armak escaped and is looking for a tomb of the ancient hero Armak, and he is hoping to find something there, something powerful. And we have to stop him. Country road. Let's take a look there. Since we are already here, let's take a look there. Some travelers used this road while wending their way from Pitax to Prevoy or Numeria. So, yeah, we enter this location. We don't know where this tomb is. Uh, it's somewhere here in this region. So we are going from location to location, searching for a tomb. <sighs> and what is this? Wolves got, wolves got to the poor horse, harnessed to the cart as it was. In due time. How big is the map? Ah, medium size, I would say. Medium to slow. Very small. Small size. Or actually, it is a kind of small map, not a medium size map. I'm there. So it's only this card. There must be some wolves nearby, right? Set wolves who got to the horse, or or maybe stone golem. Wait, I should maybe cast um, communal poison resistance or poison delay. Last time I was fighting those uh, things. I will protect. They uh, poisoned my party. God damn it. Let us strike as one. They go down. Repent. Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot they are immune. They are immune to magic. Knock, knock, use the lighting enemies on fire first. Here we go. I can't loot him. Okay. What? Unsent letter. My darling, I'm writing this while taking a rest stop in the Kalanaban wilderness. Don't be surprised, but I finally decided to get out of Pitax. I'll miss the magical potion the Akarn and Varel sells, uh, but that's fine. I brought a supply of it with me. It'll come in handy when we celebrate our, uh, celebrate our reunion. As for my homeland, things are getting worse and worse there. Everybody's appetites grow. The guards are fighting with the thieves' guild. The old trade house keeps making new schemes, and even the Academy of the Arts has been set to have some new free thinkers appearing from time to time. I'm sure uh, that pot will boil over sooner or later, and I'd prefer not to be there when it does. 
also look forward to seeing you. In the meantime, the letter cuts. Where did this golem even come from? The dead wizard looks strangely peaceful. You see no wounds or bites. Or what was this hat we received? A marksman had said. Oh, wait. Wait. Grants its wearer a plus five competence bonus on perception skill checks. When the wearer uses the deadly aim feed, it provides an additional plus two bonus to it. That's why the helmet enchants its wearer main weapon with orc bane and goblin bane special abilities. Well, we go with the head instead. Uh, wearing it increases the party carrying capacity by 200. A competent bonus on all skill checks. Hmm. I do what I must. Actually, it's finally interesting enough that we get so many good uh, equipment uh, that I really have to think hard about which items to, to keep, uh, which one to equip. It's a very, very interesting decision process. And it gets even more and more interesting. The longer we keep on going. Mysterious shrine. Oh, let's check it out. A group of megaliths with strange symbols seems to be long abandoned. Enter. I'm there. Huh? Uh, interesting. Some sort of riddle? Don't leave the megaliths, they must be placed in the correct order. This will loosen my chains. Who are you? I was betrayed by my faithful. Now I seek help from a stranger. The Ravenous Queen? The strange ghost of an elven woman begged for our help and asked us to place the megaliths in correct order. But what is this correct order? The strange ghost of an elven woman begged for our help and asked us to place the megaliths in correct order. And the thing is, I see only one megalith. So are there more places here? I guess so, I have to check out the whole map. So the nearly erased inscription reads, you won't forgive us, my queen, neither will we. Do we want to set this queen free? I don't know. Can we go up here? So I guess there will be other maps like this, um, other sides with monoliths, maybe in a special pattern on the world map, any um, some symbol or something. But yeah, so far I could only guess which one of the five is the correct position for this one. And there seems to be like 
four more rows, four more monoliths somewhere. Somewhere at least. World. So we keep on looking then. It doesn't look like we can I'm there. solve this uh, riddle right here, right now. Keep on looking. fossil fields well let's see if i can get to uh, the camp of this of the bears first so we can get miri's quest done ah the merchant again skeletal salesman you don't happen to have a bag of holding now have you nope too bad Well, thanks anyway. <clears throat> Six bears can wait. Let's save first. In case something goes horribly wrong. Uh, the six uh, bears barbarian tribe set up a new camp in the harsh Kalinaban region. Let's go there. Well, it doesn't look too lively here. As you approach the six bears campsite, you hear some rising noise and rumbling. Gathered outside their tents, the men of the tribe are having a heated discussion over some. One of them, a huge gray-haired man with a scar on his face, shouts, Brothers, this cannot go on. We need new chieftain or this tribe is no more. After the Kinslayer killed Akaya, we all acted like blind pups. We jumped into the trap, almost killed ourselves against the Bravoy. No real chief would let that happen. So, who's gonna be the new chieftain? Maybe you? Me? Oh no. The chieftain must know what threatens the tribe, be able to defend it. If we were home, I would fight for power. But here, in the southern lands, we need a different kind of chief. I say Nilek. There's grumbling in the crowd, but the barbarian continues shouting over it. Think, who led us through Numeria? Was it Akaya? No, it was Nilak, who negotiated with the local tribes while he huffed and beat his chest. Nilak, who was the only one who saw the danger of Armak and the sisters? Nilak, of course, a woman has never been leader of the six bears before. Just like six bears have never left our homeland before. But if we want to survive, we must change. Lynok! Nilak! 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 One by one, the barbarians stop arguing and join the chant. Soon the whole tribe is shouting Nilak's name. The girl steps from the crowd. Her face is confused, but glancing above the man's head, she sees Amiri's encouraging smile and nods. One of the barbarians puts a necklace of fangs around her neck, once worn by Akaya. Brothers, I accept this honor. I swear that I will lead and protect the tribe, like every chieftain since the time of the bear ancestors. I will find a way to save us from the ghost that haunts us, and I will find a place for us in the strange southern lands. Get packed! We return to Numeria. The barbarians disperse and start to pack, pack their tents. Nilak approaches and hugs Amiri. So, this is how it all turns out. I still cannot believe it. I never wanted to be a leader. But you... You should be the chief. Amiri shakes her head. There will never be no place in the six bears for me, but you can do it without me, sis. Uh. <laughs> 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 
Congratulations, Nana. Where will you lead your tribe now? To Starfall. The evil spirit who haunts us is not that powerful. He doesn't dare attack near big settlements. And congratulations. Thanks. It seems that everything in the world will change someday. Why don't you stay in my lands? Thank you. But there's no place for us here. These forests, swarms, rivers. Strange and unfamiliar people. The six bears want to be with our kin, the Kelets. Um. Uh, no. Neutral good? No, they wouldn't take the gold. But maybe. Here, take this. You might need it. Thank you. I hope one day you and our tribe will repay you for all the good you've done. Farewell, Nalek. Have a safe journey. Keks, hallo nochmal. Hallo, hallo. Ein wunderschönen Abend. Nalak bows to you, hugs a merry farewell and leads her tribe away. Ist dieses, ist dann dieses Friendly Fire jetzt vorbei? War es gut? Ich habe ich hab noch einen Tweet gesehen auf Twitter. Ja, ja, ein Tweet auf Twitter. Die haben, ja, die haben ja schon ganz ordentlich was zusammengesammelt, ne? Muss schon sagen. Respekt. So. We are done with this task. So we still wait for the sweet teeth. And then we are going with Kaliki to the Southern Barons. The twice born warlord. Still have to fight. I leave gestern. So fossil fields, maybe there, the shrewish gulch. The charred ruins. Wait, 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 wait. Charred ruins. This dark and silent old building has collapsed almost to the ground, possibly burned down. Uh, however, part of it seems to be hidden underground. Likely better preserved. Maybe this is the archive we are looking for. Schaust du jedes Jahr? Ich glaube, ich habe das noch gar nicht gesehen. Das scheint aber eine interessante Sache zu sein. <lacht> so ein äh, Spendenstream, ne? In vielen Streamern. Okay. So we're going to look here. I do what I must. Another iron golem, but this one is uh, not hostile. Let's see. Fog turned. He is hostile. Okay. Uh. Priority task: guard, guard master's possessions. Hey. Okay. Oh no, magic resistance. Of course. Do not hold up. I always forget. I always forget. Wait. A little bit uh, more distance. Twenty-two construct. Oh. Oh. Go. Let's go. God damn it. Oh, I, uh, I even have it. I didn't know. Okay. Haste. This one we can cast. Neutralized poison, constitution damage, permanent really. Let's get rid of that. So, what do we have here? Piece of sky metal. Let's save real quick. A sash of slash. Bad. 
This sash grants its wearer a plus six enhancement bonus and two dexterity and DR5 for slashing. Dexterity. Let's go with this one. Interesting. There's something else here to be found. Okay, it doesn't look like it. What about this door? No? Can't use it? Well, okay then. Alright. Short little adventure there. So, let's go back to the Shrewish Gulch. Ah, let's rest first. Um... Yeah, cheese costata. Okay. Let's go. Block, a lunge, all with a shield in your hand. Where's the fun in that? Just imagine, hit one in the ear, the other in the jaw, and punch the third one so hard he sees above the clouds. If it weren't for my shield, the whole party would spend all we have on healing potions. You like cracking skulls, and I'm perfectly content with that. But you'd better let me watch your back. It'll be a lot safer for you. All right. Was wohl mal mein Mikrofon am Öl. Rouge Gulch. When the wind passes through this deep, steep gorge, surrounding shake. Uh, surroundings shake with a screeching sound resembling the voice of the most unpleasant, scandalous person one could imagine. The effect might just be a natural phenomenon, but who can say for sure? Oh. Our way was blocked by a huge crevice in the ruddy rock, carved out by wind and rain. As wide as three or four humans lying end to end, and at least three times as deep it stretched in both directions as far as we could. Looking down over the cliff, I saw something that made me wince. Among the rocks on the sandy yellow ochre floor, body. We examined the body below. The loose fit embroidered frock, bronze skin, marked him as a man of Taldor. His knapsack lay half open nearby and a variety of random things were scattered along the floor of the gorge. Judging by the body's position, the poor man fell to his death. It couldn't have been long before, as the rocks and sand near his body were still dark with blood. Had he simply gotten too close to the cliff and stumbled? Or did he try to climb down the rock face? And if so, why? Perception check? We inspected the wall of the gorge, trying to determine how difficult climbing down would be. It wouldn't be easy to climb down where we were, but a few dozen steps away we found a good combination of bulges, cracks and ledges that would make for a somewhat more convenient path. After a bit of planning, we plotted a route that even an amateur climber could handle. A lord check? The easiest way down would be to tie a rope to one of the trees growing along the cliff. We decided the one to tie the knot and make the first descent would be... Uh, let's do it. Hakun. Once again, a length of rope proved itself indispensable for adventuring. Always bring a rope. Alles klar, Kicks with gleich. Especially when the adventurer knows how to tie a good knot. The climb down was rather easy. We pushed our feet against the rock wall and descended into the crevice. 
It looks just half an hour for uh, it took just half an hour for us all to climb down. Our whole team finally made it down to investigate the dead man's body. We'd guessed right. The poor fellow had clearly died on impact. A lot of different types of gear had been scattered around in the sand. Armor, tools, even scythes and hammers. It was clear that, it was, that this was much more than a single person could carry. We searched the bo dead body and looked at what had been scattered across the sand. The gear and knapsack and on the man's body were well preserved, but most of what we found lying on the cre crevice floor was corroded and useless. Spearheads and swords crumbled at the touch, and the armor had so many holes it looked like delicate lace. If not for the poor condition, there had been uh, there'd have been enough to outfit a whole regiment. We also noticed something that couldn't be seen from above. A large stone stood uh, blocking a hole in the wall. A sickly sweet smell leaked out from the dark narrow crack that We decided to enter the hole in the rock. We all pushed the stone together and it moved with ease, only to immediately release an incredible stench into the air. We'd found a small cave, but what was in it? God. It was full of charred, half decomposed bodies, and lying among them were huge grey eggs covered with sticky slime. This isn't an easy check. We tried to determine what the eggs were. Wow, that was close. Oh, that was close. We rolled a 19. Wow. We'd never seen anything like them. But one of our party members recalled a story they'd heard from a traveling scientist late one night at a roadhouse. Drunk as could be, the gnome laughed as he recounted a tale from some desert nomads about a gigantic worm capable of killing you with a single touch, shooting lightning from it. Any time a caravan was lost to the sands, the nomads blamed it on these worms. Female worms were set to gather dozens of corpses together to keep their eggs warm, with the extra benefit of providing a food source for newly born worms other than their own brothers and sisters. Most citizens of Academia at large dismissed the story as superstition. That was when we heard some strange sounds nearby, like someone moving huge mounds of sand nearby. Uh, and the sound was coming toward us quickly. We decided to break the eggs. Failed. We drew our weapons and struck the disgusting eggs. Our steel sank into the hard skin and gooey green slime oozed from the eggs. There was suddenly no air to breathe. Tears streamed from our eyes. Our throats grew raspy and we started coughing. It wasn't long before we had to evacuate, but not before we'd managed to destroy over half the clutch. The noise continued to grow louder, emphasized with strange dull sounds, as though the ground itself were muttering in some otherworldly language with a dry, coarse tongue. And then a wave of sand rose from the far entrance. And the crest of the wave was coming straight for us. It was time to make ourselves scarce. A fountain of sand and dust erupted not hundred steps from us. From the ground emerged a gigantic oblong head, attached to a long muscular body with no shoulders. The creature clearly resembled a worm, but it was thick as a century-old oak. Its hide was covered with warts and oozed a sticky yellow secretion, leaving a wet trail along the sand. Lightning shot from its gaping mouth, lightning up its immense throat. The air took on the smell of the storm as the monster barrel toward us. Stealth, we scattered and looked for shelter. Succeeded. Most of the team dropped their backpacks and slipped into a crack in the crevice wall. But Mara, trying to enter last, couldn't fit in, no matter how hard she tried. 
Swearing profusely, she lay prone behind the huge boulder that covered the entrance to the cave. We all held our breath. Alles klar, Keks. Dann wünsche ich dir eine gute Nacht. Mach's gut. The worm was so close we could see its dull, tiny eyes. Only the giant beast's heavy breathing and he and the hissing sound of sand dissolving as acid dropped onto it. it broke the oppressive silence. The monster swayed its head back and forth, seeking until it hit its nose on the boulder Mara was hiding behind. Mara's iron self-control didn't fail her. She stayed motionless on the ground behind the boulder. It felt like an eternity passed before the worm turned and continued its search along the gorge. As soon as the monster was gone, it carefully scaled the rock wall and escaped the depth. 